Organized Grind with Oracle Uno. Recorded live at Graph Fruit Studios in South Minneapolis. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, what's up, world? This is Oracle Uno checking in with another episode of Organized Grind, the podcast. This is episode eight. I got another special guest here with me. Uh, he comes all the way from the East Coast. He is uh, now in the Twin Cities. He is releasing a new project soon called Finding Balance and uh, is going to uh, be releasing some tracks soon. Uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, um, uh, I go as Omega. Uh, I'm originally from the East Coast over in Massachusetts, uh, 413rd area. A lot of people might know that area for the Basketball Hall of Fame. There's a lot of good talent out there. Yeah, I'm from there. I've been been doing music for a while now. Um, just finding my way out here in Minnesota, man. Definitely different, different vibe, different atmosphere. The weather's a little different too. Sure. Cool, man. Well, hey, um, how's your day been going so far? Shit, shit, shit. <laughs> Just got out of work, man. Okay. My mind shot, so if I draw a bunch of blanks, man, ah, it's you, all you good. already know. It's all good, man. I'm happy to have you here. Um, happy so, to be here. Yeah, man. Thank you. So uh, why don't we go ahead and just start from the beginning? Um, how did you get into hip hop to begin with? And where were you when you first discovered hip hop and its influence? So... The first time I ever found out about hip hop, um, it would have to be around mid '90s. Uh, DMX. Okay. DMX. Uh, the first time I've ever heard a hip hop record, it was DMX, and it was on cassette. And I want to say it was Flesh of My Flesh. Okay. Um, that was the first cassette I've ever heard, and the rest is history from there. I fell in love with it, hip, um, with hip hop ever since. DMX is a huge influence. Uh, might not recognize that from my style, but sure. he definitely played a huge influence, man. Uh, if it wasn't for him, a lot of people wouldn't have the styles that they have. I mean, I won't, I won't put no names out there, but okay, definitely influential. Eminem. Another influence that was probably the second album I cop with my own money. Sure, okay. Yeah. Um, and as a kid, you know, mm. you had to do a bunch of shit to get money. Sure. So to 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 get something on your own was definitely, you know, you you got that you got that 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 happiness from that. Yeah, that shit's huge. Uh, fortunately, yeah. when I got it. It was the explicit version. Okay. And uh, I was staying with my aunt at the time, and she went to church heavy. Sure. And she heard she came back from church one day, and she heard me bumping M, <laughs> and she flipped shit. I'm telling you, she was like, take that shit off. I don't want to hear that shit in my house. And I'm like, you know, you're pretty much doing the same thing he's doing. Yeah, it's yeah. All this profanity and whatnot, calling yourself a church lady. <laughs> But it is what it is. I mean, she ended up throwing out my, my Eminem CD. I got <laughs> mad at her. She ended up getting me a, an edited version. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, as, I, as I got older, mm -hmm. the influences just changed um, as the times did. Um, what an, Another person that was heavily influential in my life when it came to music was my dude, uh, T. Remedy. Okay. He's I've never a, heard of T Remedy. T Remedy, he's um he's a local artist out in Massachusetts. I used to make music with him. Actually, I I, I still do. Um, we keep we keep contact, and uh, he he played a huge role um, because I used to watch him do what he did, mm. and I always kind of wanted to be like like that. Sure, yeah. Um, I saw what he was doing with the music, the popularity he was getting, and. You know, just just the the freshness of of the style that he was bringing to the table. I ain't never heard nothing like that. Okay. So that definitely influenced me, and I was always around because me and his his cousins would hang out, and he'd come around every weekend and whatnot. We'll we'll chop it up. Sure. But who would you compare him to? 
Williams, <laughs> style wise. He has his own style, man. His own when style. I say he has his own style, like I always try to find somebody to compare him to. Yeah. And no uh, one comes it, close. It, nobody comes close. And if I was to choose, it'd probably be like a. Uh, a country grammar Nelly from back in the day. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, man. That's what's up. So he has like more of the like more of the singing kind of voice to him with his raps or? Yeah, um, he, he does. He, he melodizes a lot. There you go. Um, and he has a bit of a choppy fast flow as well. But he's grown over the years as well as, as long as uh, as well as his music. Right now, he's in a position where everything that he's putting out is all original, mm-hmm. which is always the goal when when, sure. it, when you're an artist. Yeah. So I'm respecting, I'm respecting his outlook on the music a lot more now because I'm seeing his growth and development as well as uh, what he's spitting about too. And that's changed. He's, he's more positive now. And okay. And that definitely helps me, too, because I'm pretty much trying to do the same thing, put out a positive message. Um, but, yeah, he's definitely one of the big influencers as well. Tight. So when it comes to DMX, what is it exactly about him that um, gravitated you towards his style? Ah, oh, man, because nobody was sounding like him at the time. Mm. Nobody. He, he Literally, you could hear DMX on the radio, and you would know it's DMX just by his voice. Sure. Um, his raw style, his raw raps, nobody was saying the type of shit he was saying back in the day. Like, come on, man. This this man was spitting bars <laughs> that were so violent, gory. Poetic at poetic the same time, Poetic at the same too. time and still speaking on, you know, like, you know, how, how you got to fight, you know, the powers that be yeah. in his own message, you know. Yeah. I still remember the Def, the uh, Def Jam poetry okay. that he did. Okay. And he spit that and pretty much had everybody just going nuts. And that was just a poem. Mm-hmm. You know, he ain't. He ain't even spit a. Uh, he ain't even perform a song. He was spitting a poem, yeah, yeah. and it touched everybody. Right. That's that's the one thing I always loved about DMX. He always kept it so fucking real, man. Mm. So fucking real. Dope. So, um, Massachusetts. Um, tell us a little bit about your childhood growing up there. Um, kind of what your home is like, man. Um, so I grew up in a in a foster home for. The majority of my life, uh, my childhood was pretty much going from home to home, and uh, I actually turned to hip hop because of that. Um, that was my escape with all the shit that I was going through at the time. I finally landed in a spot that I didn't want to mess up, mm-hmm. so I did my best to to stay in that house. Um, shout out to Dora and everybody that lived there with me. <laughs> uh, it was definitely a, a mind, a mind blowing experience. Sure. And also humbling, because a lot of people that are in the system, they get out fucked up. Mm. Sometimes they don't even get out. That's right. Uh, so for me to find my way on my own after being in the system, mm-hmm. that was uh, kind of a, a good moment for me. Sure. And yeah, my my childhood, man, I didn't really have too much of a childhood okay. because of that shit. But yeah. I think it made me the person that I am today, and I and I wouldn't have it any other way. Sure. Because had I been in a situation that was, you know, I had everything given to me, mm-hmm. I I wouldn't be the same person I am today, and I probably would be a lot lazier. Mm. Um, probably would be a fucking dickhead to people and not, you know, appreciate life the way I do now. Sure, yeah, man. So what kind of things did you do to get yourself out of the system? Uh, well, I had to I had to have my back against the wall so many times in order for me to even make a move. Mm-hmm. I was so complacent. Um I wanted to do everything that my friends were doing yeah i guess i was a follower mm. and i was just following the wrong crowd and um i mean my friends were they were they were good it's just i couldn't make decisions for myself at the time i always wanted to be where everybody else was at sure 
And I never had anybody tell me like, hey, um, you should get a job. You should do this. Think about your future. At the time, it was just about having fun and going to party and fucking bitches, smoking weed and yeah. drinking. Yeah, man. It, it was a, it was a, it was bad, but at the same time, I appreciate those times. Mm-hmm. Appreciate because I learned from them. Sure. So if you could maybe tell your your younger self or anybody right now who might be stuck in the same kind of circumstances, any sort of advice or uh, what 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 would you say to them? I would say, stay in school. Um, once you get a chance, get a job, make money for yourself, keep yourself occupied because, uh, an idle mind is usually the devil's playground. Mm -hmm. I like that. So, uh, I just say, stay busy, make your money and do what you love to do. Eventually you'll find your way. Sure. So obviously, um, you are sitting here in South Minneapolis right now, so you're obviously- not back in Massachusetts. How did you make? How did you make the journey from the East Coast to the Midwest here? So, uh, like I said, I was down on my ass mm-hmm. when I was in Massachusetts. So there was this program called Job Corps. Shout out Job Corps. Shout out Job Corps. Uh, it's pretty much a program where, you know, if you're struggling and you're in a bad situation, you can't find a job. You go there and they provide you with a home and a meal every day, and all you have to do is get your shit straight. Mm -hmm. Um, They have a bunch of vocations there, so you can leave the place with a job or your job ready. Sure. And then somewhat ready for the real world. Yeah. Um, So I finished my program there, and uh, I had the choice to stay in Massachusetts or pursue something called advanced training. So I ended up doing the advanced training because I didn't like my situation in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. I knew that if I did go back, I would be stuck in the loop. Okay. And uh, I was tired of that lifestyle. Sure. So I love all my people down there. Mm -hmm. I would would go back and visit and, you know, kick it with them. But as far as getting out, they're all proud of me for that. Sure. Yeah, man. So, um, yeah, shout out Job Corps because... They definitely helped out, man. Sure. So the advanced training then, um, did they then send you here they for sent, that? Yep, they sent me out here for that. They paid for the flight. Wow. And um, they looked at me kind of as a as an asset okay. for them. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, I'm one of the few students who were actually accepted to do that. Mm-hmm. So once they once they flew me out here... It was completely different to me. The whole vibe was different. Um, I I was just dumbfounded that I was in somewhere else yeah, other yeah. than Massachusetts because yeah. that's all I knew. That's what's up. So a, as far as the rhyming goes, because you're obviously here as an MC now, did you start rhyming back home or did you start rhyming in Job Corps or mm-hmm. did all of that start in here when you got to Minnesota? No, um, that started in middle school. Okay. Middle school, I went to Magnet Middle School. Okay. Uh, that's not a thing anymore. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they ended up uh, budget cuts for education and shit. Sure, sure. Um, but I started there. And they had my English teacher would always challenge me and she would read the poetry that I would write. Mm-hmm. Nobody was reading the shit I would write except for me. Mm-hmm. But when she would read it, she would uh, highlight certain parts of the poetry and talk okay. about what she liked about it and how she thinks I'm doing a great job. Mind you, my poetry would just raps. Sure. And one day... Um, the school had a dance, and they had a little freestyle battle. Okay. And uh, I decided to join. That's what's up. And there was a, there was everybody up there. They were all spitting, written, and you know you could tell it was spitting, written. I just went up there and started freestyle and made it all the way to the championship round. Damn. <laughs> and won it. You won it. <laughs> and I won it. Okay, first place. <laughs> first place. Damn. And uh, honestly, 
in retrospect, I shouldn't have won. Okay. Because the dude is actually spitting bars that he wrote. Yeah. It was just me that I was just, you know, going at what he was wearing, how he looked right at the moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, that ended up winning the crowd over. Damn. That feeling that I got after that is what kept me going. Yeah. Um. So. So were you, have you freestyled prior or was that the first time would, you ever started to freestyle was this battle? Uh, I would freestyle just fucking around with my boys. Okay. And, um. They, one of my boys actually told me, he's like, you should do it. I was like, nah, I'm going to get killed. He's like, nah, you should do it, man. I think you could do it. I, I think you got this. Yeah. I was like, all right, you know what? Fuck it. Sign me up. Yeah, man. So I went in there and ended up going well for me, man. That's dope. That's dope. Well, yo, we're already at 15 minutes in. Um, why don't we go ahead? We'll uh, go to the first commercial break, and then uh, we'll continue on with Omega here. Sounds good, sounds good. Cool. We'll be right back. This is Organized Grind, the podcast. Yo. Represent in the Midwest. This is Truth Maze. Yes, y'all. Check out the new EP. It's entitled The Holy Bible. You can find it on Spotify and Apple Music and elsewhere. Red Pill Music, baby. Huh. They don't want to see you in your raw style. See you in your stance when you're doing your own fucking dance. No, they don't want to see you in the space. Big grip on your face while the music straight's banging in the place. No, they don't want to see you in your raw style. See you in your stance while you're doing your own fucking dance. No, they don't want to see you in the space. Big grip on your face while the music straight banging in the place. They don't want to see the top cream rising on what I mean. Run a ski when the power ain't really about the green. The stereotype precise as laser beam. Got the mind stuck on only what's seen when truly it's the free mind keeping shit cracking. They be acting, but without us ain't a damn thing happening. The parallel, not knowing it's all yeah, about Yeah, yeah, yeah. Organized Grind the Podcast. We are here with an artist named Omega who yo, yo. Uh, came out here from the East Coast. Uh, he was just telling us about his journey from Massachusetts out to St. Paul, uh, uh, Twin Cities. Um, so I would have to imagine that. Um, leaving home and packing up and coming to the Midwest where the culture is different and everything else was a pretty big change in your life. Do you do you feel like talking about that? By far the hardest thing I've ever done. Because like I said, Massachusetts was all I knew. I didn't just the city I was in was pretty much all I knew. I hardly even got out the city. Mm -hmm. So for me to, you know, just pack up and leave everything behind it was tough. It was definitely the hardest thing I had to do, especially because I have uh, siblings out there as well. Mm. Um, granted, they're in good hands. Mm. Um, but I just felt devastated after a while because I felt like I was letting everybody down. But I realized that everybody was actually happy that I, that I left. Sure. They, they wanted me to leave because they knew it was an opportunity for something better. Mm -hmm. So... Um, it was definitely the hardest thing I've ever done, but in hindsight, the best thing I could have done. Sure. So, so, um, so you get out here. Where, where was the first place that you wound up here? Oh, um, well, I was doing that advanced training out here. Mm -hmm. um, I was doing that. My time had run out, and I wasn't able to find a job within that training. Sure. So I was down to uh, two decisions or two choices, either stay out here and, you know, take a chance mm -hmm. or go back home and take a chance. Okay. Either way, I had nothing to go to. Mm. I didn't have a steady place to live, mm. didn't have a steady income. So I was like, well, you know, I'm going to put all my eggs in this basket. Okay. And I'm going I'm to ride it out and see where it goes. Because I already know what Massachusetts had to offer me. Sure. And I wasn't cutting it out there. So I figured I'd, uh, I'd play my cards here and, and try my luck. And so far, um, I've, been, I've been dealt a great hand. Um, I started a family out here. Um, my daughter was born in January this year. Congratulations. Appreciate it, man. She, she's a handful. <laughs> um, so I, I pretty much started from scratch out here. 
literally from scratch. I had nothing. Yeah. And uh, ended up getting a job at fucking Jimmy John's, dude. Okay. Where were you staying at the time? I was at the uh, Jimmy John's. I was job. staying at on campus at the time. Okay. Yep. So that gave me enough time to, you know, at least get the first rent, first month's rent. Sure. If I were to move somewhere. So I saved that money and applied at a couple places. Nobody was taking me. Mm. Then uh, I ended up moving in with who would be my wife. Okay. Is this in St. Paul? In St. Paul. Okay. Okay. Um, so how did you meet your wife to be? Oh, right there too, on campus. Um, and Job Corps? Yep. All word up. Yep, it was, it was there and never thought it would happen. <laughs> I always, you know, I always used to say like, yeah, fuck all that. I ain't, I ain't, you know, I ain't yeah. getting in no relationships over here. I know sure. what I'm here for. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I ended up getting in a relationship, but it wasn't for the. It wasn't bad. It was. It was actually great. Um, mm-hmm. She, she's my rock. She, uh, she held me down through everything, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I owe a lot to her. Mm-hmm. And um, without her, I'd probably still be on either. A, I'd probably be in Massachusetts right now if it wasn't for her. Sure. No doubt about it. Now, is she from here or is she from another state as well? And then she came here. So so here's the kicker. She's from Mexico. Okay. And uh, she had a way tougher past than I did. Mm. So she, like, I, she's my rock. And, and the fact that she went through what she went through, especially, like, you know, people give immigrants so much shit sure just because they're coming here to better their lives and right, whatnot right. but this is a country made of immigrants right Th- that's what people have to realize Definitely. instead of saying you know build that wall keep everybody out you do that i'm telling you this place is gonna go to shit yeah because immigrants will keep this place together they're the glue of the country Fuck man. right yeah man so when i see all this hatred towards them makes me feel kind of way like you know i thought we were all in this together Mm -hmm. is the united states but obviously everybody's divided sure and that's not the way to go but anyway sure Uh, and uh what is your cultural background if you will oh i'm i'm puerto rican 100 percent 100 percent 100 percent yeah that's right yeah and it's funny because i i get (laughs) <laughs> I get called Mexican more than Puerto Rican. Ah, right? <laughs> like, hey, you speak Mexican? I'm oh, like, that's the worst. I, yo, I didn't know you could speak Mexican. Yo, I will never forget uh, one time when I was in the first grade, uh, this girl asked me if I could speak Mexico. <laughs> and I will never forget that shit. She said, do you know how to speak Mexico? And like, even as a first Mexico. grader, right, like my mind was blown by the question, like, are you serious right now? <laughs> but yo, that's fucking beautiful that you originated, came from the East Coast. If you want to go even farther back, your ancestors came from the island to Massachusetts. You wind up here and then your wife comes from Mexico. Completely different. Wound part. up up here. You two meet. Mm-hmm. and become a family like yeah. that's fucking amazing that's it's, it's bugged out man to this day like i look back and i can't believe it played out how it did that's crazy but you know i won't have it any other way it's definitely been a an eye-opening experience i'm learning every day and this life this real life shit yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's no joke man because when you're a kid you don't realize you don't realize how much time you you actually have sure when you're in the real world that's when you get kicked in the ass a couple of times and you have your, your reality checks. Right. And if if you're not doing anything after you get those reality checks, man, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you because this world don't is, is unforgiving and unrelenting and it will devour you. For sure. So you're at Jimmy John's. What was the next step from there? Well, my next step from there was find a better job. Okay. Um Started applying, went on Indeed.com. Sure, shout out Indeed, shout out man. Indeed, I've gotten bro. most jobs from there. <laughs> I know, they're, they're, they're quick. Yeah, man. And um, found my job. I'm working at Loomis. Okay. And um, I'm still there. So I've been there for about four and a half, five years now. Okay. And we'll probably just beep out the company name just, just to keep it, just so people aren't stalking you and shit like that. So was this a pay, uh, a, a pay raise from... 
you know, like, was Absolutely. this a drastic, uh, 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 drastic, I want to say, what, come up? Definitely it was because I was only part-time at Jimmy John's. Plus, they weren't even giving me all my hours. They Aww. were like, send me home with a few hours to go so I wouldn't get that. Aww, you know? yeah, they were playing that bullshit. They were playing that, yeah. and I, I couldn't do that shit anymore. Mm. I, I just found myself, you know, digging myself in a deeper hole. And uh, I had to get, I had to make some changes, and I did, and um, ended up where I'm at now, and uh, it's been it's been good ever since. Oh. Um, you know what's crazy though? I met I met uh, one of the homies there. Last call. Okay, last call. Shout out to last Shout call. Shout out last call, and um, that's actually how I started making music out here. Okay, so while so while you're going through just just life, are you still rhyming are you still trying to write rhymes are you still trying to keep that going absolutely um the whole time that that's pretty much the only thing that keeps me sane mm. is music writing music and uh the idea is to actually put these tracks together which was hard because i knew nobody out here and i didn't know how to go about the whole situation and of course i didn't have the money for studio time sure and one day I hear uh, somebody that I work with talking about uh, rap, and then I let them know that I rap. They're like, oh, yeah, you rap? Well, you know, uh, D in the back, he raps too. I said, oh, okay. So I see him on break, and, and I bring it up. He's like, yeah, I rap. I'm like, yeah, me too. Let me show you some shit. Yeah. So I started spitting, and he's like, he ended up telling me, he's like, yeah, I fuck with it. Right. Uh, we're going to have to get up one of these days. Yeah. And the rest is history. Yeah. Um, I, I recorded most of my project there. Sure. And just as a uh, sidebar, uh, me and Last Call, he's actually going to be on in like a week or so from now. But uh, I grew up with Last Call. And uh, I remember when you started popping up in conversation. And uh, I remember when he started to uh, show me some of your shit. And I was just like blown away. Like, who is this dude? So... Months before we ever even met, um, you were on my radar from last call being like, yo, you need to check this dude out that I'm working with right That's now. That's dope. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, man. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, all right, so you start to work with last call. Um, why don't we go ahead and start talking about that? What's it like to work with last call? You're finally in the studio now? Yep, I'm in the studio now. Uh, my nerves are, are bad and... I'm thinking like, what the hell? Uh, how how's everybody gonna react to me? And and am I am I really good enough to to be recording? Like I'm just starting to question myself and I'm like, you know what? Take a breath. You know you've been through this before. Go in there, make your track. Yeah. And then you'll deal with the aftermath afterwards. Sure. So I get there, make a track, uh, put down a verse, and um. It wasn't even a full track. I just put down a verse, and last call it ended up liking it. Mm. One thing about him that I love is that he lets me be who I am, no matter what. Um, I record how I want. He doesn't try to impose his will at all, and it's a it's a good it's a good uh, it's a good chemistry between us when we're in the studio because we know how to. You know, uh, fill each other's blanks if you want. Sure, yeah, you know man. what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it, it's good. I, I I like working with him. It, it's a free. It's like a. It's, it's freeing to to actually uh, express yourself how you want to do it without any limitations or strings attached. Sure. Yeah, man. Uh, actually, you know what? You were actually on the first track that I recorded out here. I was. You were. What What was the name of the song? Ah, was it that shit with uh, Tunnel Vision? Uh, tunnel Vision. I'll have to pull that track up. I'm trying to remember it. Um, we've done, you know, we've done, we've done a bunch. so many songs since then. We've done a bunch, but Tunnel Vision that's, was the first wild. one that I've ever recorded out here. Okay, and uh, that's and that's how I ended up meeting you. Uh, Word. Last call was like, yeah, my homie, my homie Oracle's coming through. Um, like, oh, okay, uh, well, I remember that night. Yeah, I think I remember that night yeah, now. We, we yeah, we went on a freestyling binge. Yeah, we did. We did. A lot of rum was in the room. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Ideas kicking back and forth, and it was good. The, the track came out better than I thought it would, honestly. That's right. 
yeah, it's it's all slowly starting to come back to me now. Um, yo, that's fucking fire. Well, hey, man, we're at a half an hour already, so why don't we go ahead, we'll go into our second commercial break, and then um, you can go ahead and update the people on what you're doing nowadays, including this, uh, this project that you're about to drop here pretty soon. Hey, what's up, world? This is Oracle Uno checking in to let you know that I just released a brand new EP entitled Speech Therapy. It's entirely self-produced, I made every single beat, I wrote every single lyric, I recorded it, mixed it, and mastered it, and you can now get it at oracleuno.com. That's O-R-I-K-A-L-U-N-O dot com. Thank you for listening. Anticipation, I ain't got the patience. I'm getting so close that I can taste it I'm the chase, can't leave a moment wasted Give it all I got just to make it Anticipation, I ain't got the patience I'm getting so close that I can taste it I'm the chase, can't leave a moment wasted Give it all I got just to make it Shoveling my holes into the locomotion Combustible, the engine running off explosion Increase the potency, pour in my Puerto Rican potion Keep the motion rolling, no stop Yes, yes, y'all Organized Grind the Podcast here with Omega yeah. Sharing his life story, man It's been an inspirational story um, I'm really hoping that people who are listening uh, Especially people who might be going through some of the similar struggles that you went through Are hearing um, You know, it's One of the main things about this podcast that I really like to highlight is um, the victory story, if you will, of of going through shit, of just going through mud, of going through the hardest things that you can in life and coming out the uh, uh, other end, excuse my stutter, um, a better person. And I do feel like you are a shining example of that. So I yeah, appreciate you. you going in and, and really sharing your life story here because it means a lot to people who are listening and it means a lot to me to have that story from you. I, I appreciate that. And I also appreciate the platform. Um, and I also want to say that if they if there is people out there, which I'm, I'm sure there are, a lot of people in the same situation or, or have gone through the same situation. I just want to say, don't give up, because once you do, it's hard, you're just digging yourself in a deeper hole. You just got to keep moving forward. As much as as much as it gets hard and you want to quit, and life feels like it's breaking your balls, um, best thing you could do: bite down and keep grinding hard, man. Because at the end of the day. You're the only reason you're going to either succeed or fail. And um, nobody is going to give you a, a nobody's going to give you handouts. Nobody's going to make it easy for you. But I want you to know that you can do it. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not rich. I'm not famous, but I'm in a better situation than I was before. So if I could get my ass up and do something about it, I'm sure you can too. You just got to actually do it. Now, that's what I want to say to y'all. And uh, hopefully you get in a better situation and uh, you can make your dreams a reality. I'm in the, I'm in the midst of doing that right now. I'm just, you know, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm living proof that you can do it too. Like I said, I'm not famous, I'm not rich, but I'm in a better situation all thanks to hard work. And that's all it really takes, dedication, hard work. And if you put in the work, you're going to get results. Hard work gets results. And my man Oracle is definitely a a, 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 capital, uh, a catalyst to that. Mm-hmm. My, man, my man Oracle grinds, man. This organized grind thing, man, I like what you're doing with this podcast. It's, it's, it's good. You. It's going to bring a lot of people together. It's going to shine light on a lot of situations. It's going to shine light on a lot of local MCs. Sure. Um, this is a great This is a great platform um, to, to just for unity and, and also to, to, to bring the hip-hop scene to Minnesota to people who, haven't, who aren't aware. Mm. Um, I feel like a lot of times Minnesota gets overlooked when it comes to hip hop, um, there's only a few names that ring a bell when I think about it. But when you talk about it, you know so many more. Sure. So I mean, because you're from here, and I understand that, but it's definitely is, is is a breath of fresh air to to witness what what's going on right here. Is is great. 
bars, man. I don't even, I don't even know what to say, man. That was that was heavy, man. Um, thank you, thank you for that, and uh, I'm super happy that you're here with us to contribute to our culture as well. We are very happy to have you, and um, you know, a lot of people might not know about you yet, but I have a feeling that's going to change soon. Yeah, I hope so. So uh, that's a perfect little segue here. Um, why don't we go ahead and start talking about this project that you're uh, 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 about to drop here? Uh, it's called Finding Balance. Yeah. Um, why don't you tell us about the project? What's some of your favorite moments? Who's producing? Who's who's helping you put it out? And uh, what can people expect from this? All right. So for the most part, it's uh, mainly a bunch of um, bunch of beats that I just gathered up going through the Internet. So I'm not really trying to make money off of it. I'm just trying to put myself out there. Sure. Um as far as the the recording, Last Call recorded most of that album, actually all of it. You mastered it, mm. um, so you you got a, a you got you got a glimpse on how I work, yeah, how yeah. I track my stuff. Yeah, and uh, I'm I'm actually happy with the outcome. Um, finding balance though is really about um, exactly what the title is. Um, my journey trying to find balance within the within life and uh talk about some stories that changed my life mm -hmm. um it's pretty much cut and dry just like that it's it's a okay. uh, it's, it's it's pretty much just finding balance within your life and sure. how how to do it and you know I'm still not there I'm still finding balance right you know that's that's all you could do is live every day and and, and learn from it so it's just pretty much a, a, a collection of past experiences that I learned from mm. tied into one package sure. of rhymes and, and beats. I mean, that's the best way I could put it. Uh, that's what's up. That's, <laughs> that's what's up. up. Like, I'm just getting out of work, so my mind yeah, is all nah, shot. It's all good, man. Are, are, there, um, are there certain songs that um, you're particularly excited about? All of them. All but, of them. I like that. But uh, in particular, there's there's this one that I feel like is gonna get the attention of the masses. Um, it's very relatable, and it's it's a story track. It's called Matt. I'm gonna leave it at that because I want to build some anticipation some anticipation towards it. I'm gonna drop a video before I drop the tape, and most likely that's gonna be the that's gonna be the one. That's, okay. That's gonna be the you know yeah but definitely that that track itself it, it took me a long time to even write it out and and record it uh shed a few tears throughout the process sure and um i'm just i just want the world to know that i put my heart in this and you get my 100% 110% all the time so i, I really just hope they they like it yeah man um but even if they don't I'm doing it for me. Exactly. It, it makes me happy. If if people just follow me and uh and they want to roll with it, that's a plus. Sure. I I I just love to do this. Sure. So if people if uh, people want to find you right now, um, where can they hook up with you? Well, I just made a I just made a Twitter. Drop it. Yesterday, uh, you go on Twitter at Omega, uh, O dash Mega. All capital. Okay. Um, also, if you want to get a hold of me, um, just made a SoundCloud too. Uh, Omega Music four one three at SoundCloud. Okay. Um, I'll be putting some music up there pretty soon. I'll keep y'all. I'll keep y'all. You know, updated on that. Dope. As of right now, there's one track on there, so y'all could go and check that out. I won't go into detail about it. Y'all could do that. Y'all could go and check that out. But you won't you won't be disappointed. Dope, man. Well, um, apparently uh, you are blessing the podcast with an exclusive sneak peek leak, if you will, yep. of a song called Cowabunga. Yeah, yeah. Shout uh, out Ninja Turtles. Yeah, yeah. Before we get into that, do you have uh, final words, shout outs that you'd like to say throw out in the world? But yeah, yeah. Shout, just shout out to everybody doing what they love to do no matter the cost um just keep doing what you're doing 
eventually you're going to get where you want to be. Um, get up after you fall. Keep it moving. Shout out to everybody back in Mass. You know, everybody I rock with. I don't want to go into names. It's going to take too long. <laughs> Shout out everybody over here, this whole Minnesota hip-hop scene. I rock with y'all, man. I want y'all to rock with me, you know. Uh, with, with that being said, I'm going to give y'all a glimpse of, of, of what I bring to the table and my style. I hope y'all fuck with it for real, for real. Cool, man. Well, hey, this has been Omega on the Organized Grind podcast. My name is Oracle Uno. We're going to go ahead and uh, kick off this track. This is Omega Kawabunga. Thank you for listening. Peace and love. Recorded live at Grassroots Studios in South Minneapolis. With these raps became an artist, I'm better with this and drawing I'm better working in solace and next reverses a novice I was told I wouldn't make it cause I ain't make it through college But once the spot is vacant, I'm taking this over regardless I'm fighting for position like I just entered a gauntlet If what I want's in my vision, my mission stops when I got it Like sugar in a tank, it ain't easy to get me started But if you gas me up, your face will look like I farted After spitting cause I'm shitting with diction, I need a toilet Say you got that work, I'm checking it like an audit My rap's like narcotics, I got you hooked to the product And got you reminiscing about the day that you bought it and the deep water, what keeps me from going under Is my world to deal with all this shit like a plunger Niggas where they cold, I'm frigid like frozen tendrils Bought my green like cucumbers, you slumber, I move the numbers Got them in the blender, I tell them to calm down Bomb clouds when I put this together like time Rain, hell, and thunder, I'm thinking of storm clouds In case you ever wonder how rain in our song sounds Killing competition, brought liquor to pour out Been running this in the ground, my sneakers are worn out They can't call me, they racking up more vows Even ask the umpire, I'm player to call out No doubt, I'm on affinity No comparison meaning there's no symmetry I'm not surprised by you trying to mimic me It just outlines your true lack of identity Deliberately deliver heat the bees from the fourth person trinity To wherever they hear of me We're not alike, no use in using the simile I'm sick of with the written, the epidemic's epitome I know you see my aura, follow religiously You're lost in this equation, let's start you off at parentheses Let's get it, let's get it, now let's go Let's go, let's get it, now let's go Let's go, let's get it, let's get it now let's go Let's go, let's get it, now let's go, let's go. Let's get Welcome rounds for all of us sitting at the round table Rounds of shots let off the wall so Lord help them I'm gonna arrive on time, it's so seldom See garlic, drinking the beer brewed in Belgium Chicks like crucifixion, so I'm gonna nail them Do what I want, there's nothing you can tell me Give up a quit, that's something you can't tell me Sincerely, oh, lose someone you love dearly For thinking of messing with somebody you know barely I'm far from family, keep my enemies near me Don't fear me, respect me, I get hurt severely Sight of a casket and palm bearer brings more terror than bearers of bad news I see through the fog in the mirror The fog clears up and then it becomes more apparent Misguided youth lose due to the lack of parents Caring, sharing the truth, so listen and hear it This here is cool music just for boosting your spirit Whether the book or the two, please like it and share it Until our talent is proved that the radio air it You know it's out to me, chasing all this monopoly It's becoming atrocity, credit a false economy In search of sovereignty, it's becoming harder to see It's in poverty, roaming like the normal travelocity Wow.